Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig over at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to what is the first in a series of videos that will document and detail the build of this front dash that we see before us now. So it's my plan to construct the entire dash here. Um, the only part of it I've built to this point is just the engine monitoring instruments here, the EMI. And that was just because at that point I was running uh, some tests on RS485 networks. At this point, none of the rest of it has been built. So in this introduction, I wanted to take a little bit of a walk through the front dash uh, as I'm sort of planning out in my mind how I'm going to build the instruments that will be then installed into the physical frame. Um, and then further videos will, will show the frame being built and the different instruments and, and their implementation and ultimately the testing of it as one completed unit. So let's buckle up. So exciting times ahead. Um, it will be over quite a large number of months that this would uh, be done, just for the fact that I don't want to rush it. Um, I do want to take the time to, for each part to do it to the best standard that I can. I have been thinking out quite a fair bit about uh, the use of Helios. Um, and it, ideally, um, it would be everything would be physically built. Um, so just like where I'd built the uh, engine monitoring instruments here, that could have been a Helios export. And I'm glad I built that. Um, but when I'm thinking of the HSI and ADI here, there's really a lot to those and they are quite complex. So um, whilst I want each done to a high standard, I feel that to actually build that myself would be a huge project just in itself. So I'm thinking that I'd build this overall dash. Obviously, I'm going to have some monitor exports, viewpoints, uh, mods for the MFCDs here and here and the RWR and I'll have to have a look at possibly these two here for the digital clock and the standby attitude indicator um, all the rest being physically built but then just this bit being a Helios export and at that point then I'd have the front dash completed and I've got something to fly with but then I think what would for me be the ultimate upgrade later would be to come back and actually either build these or install um, some real uh, instruments a real HSI and, and ADI. Alright let's have a, a close look at, um, at some of these other panels so I guess one of the first ones to be looking at down in this corner the uh, landing gear and flaps panel. So, yep, straightforward, couple of toggles, push button, indicator lights, little stepper motor behind here. Really, for me, this whole panel is just about this lever. So I want something that feels right and looks right. So um, I've got something in mind for this that I think will work really, really well. Then we've got the armament panel, which is just a series of toggles, uh, two and three position. Really, it's just about having uh, something attached to the actuator, which gives it this look, this particular style that's used in the sim and in the real A10C. And we've got the heading uh, attitude reference HARS button, just this little one here. So nothing to that really. UHF repeater, so just a little seven segment display on OLED. Don't really see any bother with that one. Angle of attack indicator, yep, same principle as when I did the EMI panel, just be a little stepper behind there. And then we've got digital clock attitude indicators, standby, as discussed before. Let's have a bit of a closer look at some of the ones a bit further up. Right, multifunction colour displays. 
So I don't want to use the ones you can get for from Thrustmaster only because um, whilst I'm sure that the quality is really good and whatnot, it will mean that I need to use a smaller uh, viewport here and I don't want that, I want this to be full size so I'm going to build um, my own bezel for it and what's going to be interesting um, about that along with some of the other uh, little push button you can see over here and the upfront controller is that whilst I've done backlighting to my panels before I've not to this point had any push buttons that are backlit within themselves so uh, there's some illuminated tactiles uh, I've been looking at online and I've just been running a few tests on them recently so I think that they would work quite well so yeah really looking forward to, to building this one and of course what's great about this it's um, a bit of a buy one get one free because whatever I uh, build for the left, left MFCD I can just mirror that build it twice and then there's the right one sorted out too We've then got the airspeed indicator. Now, there's actually quite a lot going on with this one because you've got two pointers and you've got this little rotary bit behind here. I've just been thinking on that and the way it rotates. So I do think this one here is actually quite a piece of work to do on this one. And then we've got the, I'll just come over here, countermeasure set control panel. Quite a lot packed in a tight space. You've got you know, the need for three little digital displays, some kind of OLED. You've got several little indicator lights, plus you've got these push buttons, some other controls. So um, yeah, quite a lot in the little footprint, but that would be a good one to build. Uh, vertical velocity indicator. So that one don't really see any problems with, just a simple stepper. Uh, same principle as when I did the EMI, it should be fine. Let's have a close look at the altimeter. Right, so I do think with the altimeter there is quite a lot to this one. I think this could be a little project in itself. Obviously I'd want to be looking very carefully at this type of stepper motor I'm using because the speed at which I've seen this move uh, when I've been flying, I'd obviously want um, an upgraded stepper. 360 degree two. Um, and you've got all these little readouts in the background so um, I do see this is one I'll be spending quite a bit of time on to get that just right. Let's have a little look down here. Uh, fuel quantity and hydraulic indicators. Um, so a bit like I've mentioned for the um, airspeed indicator, similar sort of thing, you've got a uh, dual pointers and a little display here so some kind of little OLED. I've got a few bits in mind for this I've been looking at a few components what I've built previously on the EMI here is only ever one pointer on its own whereas obviously you're going to have a lot more going on here but I've been looking a fair bit online and I've got a few components in mind that should do the job let's have a look down here Right, so the first thing is going to be the uh, the navigation mode select panel. So I'm looking forward to getting this one up and running. You've got, in my mind, the key bit really is these square push buttons to get a square momentary push button that you can effectively backlight within itself. Then you've got the uh, TISL panel, that's target identification set laser panel, which is not functional in the sim. So. Um, for that one, that might be one that's actually like a placeholder. So when I'm thinking back to the left console I did, the only panel that I built that was not actually interfaced was the IFF. And the idea being that if at some point there's a plugin that I like the look of that will bring that functionality alive, then I've got all the right components in place just to wire it up and bring it online. And I think I'm going to do something similar with the TISL panel. Um, so it'd be a placeholder bit, we'll have all the right components and then I can always revisit that later. And then we've got the circuit breaker panel here. So um, it is my plan to have that all wired in. So obviously I can toggle the status of them uh, from that side of the sim and that updates in it, but also if anything's tripped, 
uh, fuse wise I can clearly see that too. And then what that brings us to will be a brow that will sit right over the front dash which we can see here and it's going to have these T handles for extinguishing fires in the engines and the APU and then one of the later things to be built that will sit on top of the um, the front dash will be the upfront controller. Let's just have a look from the side because this is almost something a bit like when I did the DVADR here. The upfront controller is something that will sit in its own enclosure. Yeah. So, yeah, this this will be an interesting one to build and. I do want to, as well as the illuminated push buttons, do something with this here. Perhaps have a real one from a real aircraft. I think that would be nice. The uh, front dash will extend up as high as this point here. So it will go up to and include the angle of attack indexer and the aerial refueling status indicator. So I know there's been a few people that have been following my build for a while now and kind of feel like we're all going to be going on this journey together. So I'm um, really looking forward to getting the videos out there. i uh, be interested to get your comments at the bottom of the video, see what you think. Um, and I think before I get to work on the frame, I think I'm going to take this kite up into the big blue and do a few laps and do a bit more thinking. And uh, I will see you in the next video.